Hello everybody, this is Yinka. It's a beautiful morning in San Diego, California, where, well, every morning is beautiful here. But, but you know what, everywhere else in the world, it's beautiful. Trouble is everybody's just distracted by, you know, chasing the almighty buck or thinking that <laughs> having a buck is gonna solve their problems. I've been teaching, well, I hate to use the word teaching because that makes me, that implies that I have some sort of PhD in theology, no. So let me use the word sharing. Some of what I've come to realize through my personal experience that the love of God will set you free. I'm calling this series, um, Know God and Change Your Life. And that's because if you do know God, your life will change, okay? Now, I've been through several sessions basically implying to anybody who has been watching for the most part that you don't know God if you are still living be below your circumstances. Let me put it like that. If you still have stuff that you're dealing with, you know, and I'm using that expression because it could be anything. You could be dealing with a cancer, you could be dealing with poverty, you could be dealing with um, uh, sickness, you know, disease, relationship problems. There's all sorts of stuff that you could be dealing with. People go through a lot of emotional trauma and, um, you know, basically struggle through life. And I'm implying in my messages that if you don't or aren't living above your circumstances, then there's a good chance you're missing God. Let me put it that way. Okay. Again, I'm going to start by saying whatever I'm saying, I'm saying in love. I have nothing against anybody. I'm only trying to share a truth. And you don't have to take my word for it. But I will, I will suggest that you go to the word, look at some of the Bible passages I put below this message, and look at them for yourself and make up your mind whether or not what I'm saying is truth. Okay? Now, essentially, I've been saying that... Um, we, as people, as God's people, as human beings, are not meant to live, you know, or react to life, you know. And that's what most of us do. You know, we just let life kick us around. And I'm suggesting that fundamentally the reason why we allow that happen is because we think that nothing happens that God doesn't allow to happen. You know what I mean? There's a passage in the Bible that says, if the, thief, if the master of the house knew when the thief would come, he would have watched, you know, and then he would not have suffered his house to have been broken into. Hmm? Now, that, that in today's English means that if you know what's coming at you, you're not gonna, if you see a Mack truck coming at you, you're not going to stand there and wait for it to crush you. You get out of the way or do what you can to prevent, you know, the calamity. And what is happening in today's world is that we are being broadsided by, by the devil because, uh, should I say, we're being broadsided by the devil and we don't even know it. Well, I do. I don't know about you. Okay? But if you are still one of those people that rationalizes his or her problems, man, you don't know what you're dealing with. Okay? Satan is a master deceiver. Okay? If he wasn't a deceiver, he wouldn't have any power. The power was given unto you in this world by God. Immediately he created you, he blessed you with that power. Even after he destroyed the world with the flood and Noah survived it, he blessed Noah again. And God is not the sort of person that talks too much or, you know, says stuff over and over and over again because when he speaks, it comes to pass, all right? But, you know, every now and then he makes an exception. Usually, I would like to think because maybe for some reason, you might overanalyze and think that he probably didn't mean that the first time he said it, you know? So he says it again, just so that you know that 
this is exactly what I want for you. Be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over everything that moves, lives and breathes on this earth. Everything. There's no qualification, including the devil. Okay? But you see, um, if you do not grasp this fundamental truth, you're going to let Satan kick you around. And you're going to, worse, worse, you're going to even embrace it. Okay? Because you are thinking that God owns the power, so if whatever comes to you, gets to you, then somehow, even if God, even if you're one of those that doesn't think that God is the cause of everything, you think that he's the one that allowed it to happen. And so, you take it with grace. And so you suffer unnecessarily. This is a summary of what I've been saying. That you need to change your thinking or you are going to get a lot less out of life than God wanted for you to have. Okay? Now, there's a lot to say, okay? But first of all, I want to start off this session by suggesting to you that even the concept of limitation, of scarcity, of there's not enough, is ungodly. Now, I realize that that is a very, uh, is a very bold claim. And the reason why I am asserting this is that there's plenty of evidence in the Bible to say just that. Okay? When God moves, he moves in a way that is beyond what you can rationalize. And he's consistently done that over time. Okay? It's not like it happens once in a while or that's not the way it works. That is who God is. And I'm thinking, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm thinking that he does that to show us that we, we too have that power. But somehow or another, we miss it. Okay? Now, I'll give a few examples. But well, let me just start with one that always comes to my mind. It's one of my favorites. There was a time, I think it was Second Kings chapter 6. Uh, I'll check the exact passage. But bottom line was that Elijah and his boys, I think there was, it was something about the place where they were living was too small. And so they, his boys were like, you know what, boss, this place is too small. Let's go and build somewhere where we'll have enough space. So he said, go ahead. And so they were uh, clearing the bushes somewhere near a, a river. I think it was the River Jordan. And, you know, while they were hacking at stuff, the axe head of one of the boys, one of the boys flew off. Now, I don't know if you know what an axe head is, but those things are heavy. They are pure iron. Okay? And of course... It flew into the river and sank like the iron that it was. Now, the guy cried, oh, man, I borrowed this thing. What am I going to tell the owner? And Elijah was, like, Elijah was like, dude, what's the problem? What am I going to tell the owner? I said, okay, where did it, which area did, you, did it land? And the guy pointed to it. And Elijah put a branch in that place. And the iron, <laughs> it floated. <laughs> I don't know. I, that one just kills me. How does full density iron float? But you know, this is just another day in the park for God. I mean, there are so many other ways he could have solved the problem. He could have created money and bought a new axe. He could have, you know, so, but that was just another day in the park for him. This is the God you serve. There's nothing too small. There's nothing too big for him. Okay? But you will find out that you are the one who is rationalizing for God what might be or might not be too much for him. And this is the reason why you are limiting yourself. Now, it is not an accusation. I'm just pointing out to you that intellect kill you in the things of God. Because they don't go in the same direction. The things of God and intellect, I, they, are, they should be going like this, in opposite directions. Because when you exalt your intellect, 
you are pushing God aside. That's just the way it works. Now, if you can get yourself to the point where your intellect and God are working together, that's the ideal state. <laughs> but I don't know that that's an easy task. Because God requires total surrender, not partial. Hmm? Total. Okay? Now, the things of God, again, I would say, are foolishness to the intellect. They are foolishness. Take, for example, I mean, where I come from, we use cash. I don't know about all this credit uh, business. Yeah? But when you want to buy something, where I come from, you use cash. Okay? Now, assuming that you had something you wanted, maybe for the sake of this illustration, let's say a house, and you needed a million bucks. And somehow or another, you had managed to raise 900 bucks, 900,000 bucks. Hmm? You just need a hundred grand and that's it. You're done. You buy your house. Now, remember, it's a cash only deal. It's not all this uh, mortgage and 35 years business. No. It's a cash deal. And you have 900 bucks. Do you know that in God's way of thinking or way of, how should I say without, you know, what God would suggest to you, because God doesn't force anybody, is that instead of you looking for another hundred grand and going to buy your house, you say that, maybe I've made you, uh, you've made 900,000 or 900 grand, right? Give me 10% of that money. That is take away 90 grand and give it out. That is taking you a bit further away from where you are supposed to go. And actually almost as much as you just need to finish the job. That's the way God's things work. Okay? You will pull out of your, instead of looking for 100 grand, you take 90 grand out of your money and give it away. That will not go well with your intellect. In fact, you can't rationalize it. But that is the way the things of God are. Okay? Now, I'm not suggesting to you that, uh, you know, I'm not, just go and read the Bible. That's what I'm, this is the whole objective of everything I'm saying is that you need to educate yourself about the things of God. Okay? Now, why I brought that up is that I'm trying to show you that if you are using your intellect, you will not enjoy God. Your intellect will tell you, ah, 100 grand will finish this job. God's way of life is remove 90 grand out of what you already have and give it away. That's God's way of life. Well, depending on who you exalt, <laughs> that's what your actions will demonstrate eventually. But it is written also that there's nothing that you give to God in this life that he will not return to you a hundredfold. Okay? Well, again, it still boils down to the basic thing that do I believe? And that is the summary of everything we've been saying. Do you believe that Jesus has come and cleansed you of all unrighteousness and has restored unto you the power that God gave to Adam before Satan came to take it from him or trick him out of it rather? Do you believe that what Jesus has done makes you righteous in the eyes of God without sin, blameless? Do you believe or do you not? Do you want to analyze? Or do you believe? Do you want to exalt your intellect? Or do you want to believe the words that God has spoken out to you? I tell you, my friends, that if you cannot convince yourself, if you cannot convince yourself that God's word is more real than what you see in the physical. And you are not ready to deal with God. You are not ready to, you are not ready to enjoy the things of God. Okay? I say this because there's no other way. When Jesus was here, he did some things that, you know, 
a lot of people think that the story of Jesus is just one of them stories or is an example of a great man of God or, or it applies only to him and all of that. Well, um, I want to suggest to you that that is not true. Jesus basically came to show you and I how we should live. Okay? And if you would notice, he didn't, you know, his lifestyle was not like the lifestyle that many of us have. So, I mean, it doesn't come automatically. It take, it, there's a price to be paid to walk in the victory that Jesus walked in. It wasn't just that because he was the son of God or he came from straight from God or he was the spirit of God himself that made him more victorious than you or I can ever be. No. For example, when he extracted himself for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, I assure you, it wasn't because uh, there was a Disneyland theme park, theme park there hmm? or because he had some friends that he wanted to go and hang out with there or because there was some fun to be had. He did that, I would like to suggest to you, because he needed to kill the flesh. He needed to get the flesh to submit to his spirit. Man, I haven't done it before. I'm not saying that I've done it before. But man, when you try fasting, <laughs> it's not funny. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about 40 days. But those are some of the things that, those are some of the sacrifices that Jesus made. Okay? So God, I mean, that's another story for another day. But let me just summarize it and, and point it out that when he went to that wilderness, it was so that by the time he came out, his flesh, when he talks to his flesh, his flesh, his flesh will say, yes, boss. So many of us, <laughs> when our stomach rumbles, it's straight to the nearest, uh, if it's in America, it's this, the next burger place or, or, you know, all of that stuff, you know? And then we wonder why we are not walking in the same victory. Well, it's clear that the sacrifice or the price you pay is not to determine the fruit you will reap. Okay? You've got to commit yourself completely to God. Now, when Jesus came out of those 40 days of fasting, a lot of people think, oh, the devil only tempted him on the mountain. If you look at the bottom line of the temptations after the devil threw his best at Jesus and Jesus used the word to counter him, it says the devil departed from him for a season, meaning that he never, he never stopped, okay? And this is also to let you know that he's never going to stop trying to get at you. That's his work to distract you, to scatter everything, to draw your attention away from the fact that Jesus has already paid the price for you. Okay? Now, I'm going a bit technical, and at the same time, I'm trying to open up a lot of things that you need to start thinking seriously about. The things of God are serious business. Okay? You are not going to be a popular jingle if you, if you commit yourself to serving God. It is going to take some people off. It is going to cost you friendships. It's going to cost you. Your lifestyle is going to change. But you will, you will walk in victory because it is part of the package. Okay? Now, I'm saying this because we have this whole mentality that everything has got to be like peaches and cream all the time. You know, which is why we pander to our emotions Every time we feel, I'm bored, let me go and watch a movie. I'm this, let me go and do something. I'm that, let me go and do something. <sighs> Not like that. Things of God are serious business. Things of God are based on love. And love, as God calls it, is not, it's, love is sacrifice. Love is doing and giving away everything you've done. Love is, love is painful in its nature. Because the people you are giving it to, probably will never appreciate it. But you know what? It makes the world go round. Okay? So, again, I'm, I'm not sure where to start from, but I'm bringing out these things because, you know, I want you to know that you've got to seek in order to receive. You've got to believe 
in order to receive. And you are going to find all the answers in the word. You just have to start knowing the word of God. Because Jesus came to give you life and give you more abundant life. I'm specifically addressing Christians in this, my outreach here. God has so much more for you than you are walking in. Cancer is nothing in the eyes of God. It is nothing. If you have anything that you are dealing with that you are not victorious over, it is because you have not trusted or believed that Jesus has set you free, that Jesus has borne your iniquity and was beaten for your sake, became poor so that you may be rich. Jesus has done everything that needs to be done. All you have to do is believe and receive. And because it is that quote unquote simple, Satan does everything he can to distract you. Most people think Satan is one big ugly monster, or you know, you'll see him coming. And man, if you could see a Mack truck coming, would you stand there and wait for it? Of course not. Satan is not stupid, even if he doesn't have power. And so he's woven himself into the very fabric of your society. So you never know that all he's doing is just distracting from his truth. Distracting you from his truth. And beware, even as I am pointing you to the word now, when you go for it, he's going to come at you with the vengeance. Because his work is to distract. So it requires a complete commitment from you. Otherwise, he'll find a way to draw your attention away. Like the thorns that Jesus spoke of, spoke of in the parable of the, of the sower. He'll find a way to distract you. So if you don't make a commitment, you won't get to the point where the word will bear fruit in your life. It takes commitment, my friends. But you see what God has given you? Nothing can take it from you. Because when God gives you something, the Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And that's because he's, he's a person of integrity. If he speaks, that's it. He's not taking it back. Okay? So, essentially, I'm just saying the ball is in your court. Okay? If you don't seek out what the word says you already have and grasp it, you're not going to get the best of God. Okay? Now, if you are with me, this will be a blessing to you because it means that there's no problem that you're dealing with that you don't have the power to conquer. God loves you and wants you to walk in victory. As a matter of fact, when you are victorious, that's when you are telling the world that God is real. It's not when you struggle and and that, oh God, I'm not, paying, I'm, I'm not doing your Ten Commandments well, help me. You've missed God. You are, God, has, God has gone far beyond that with you. He has cleansed you through the words, words which he has spoken, through the sacrifice of Jesus. All you need to do is believe and receive. And if you are still analyzing, if you are still analyzing, oh my goodness, you're going to miss God. Okay, now I hope that I've reached out to someone or the other today. And uh, I want to stop now because, again, there's too much to say. And I want to try and limit the size and the length of these videos so that, um, you know, for those with data, data limitations, they can still enjoy it without like, eating up their plants, you know. So thanks, guys. And remember that God loves, God loves you. Be blessed and have a wonderful day. Bye bye now.